In this uh, screencast, I'm going to talk about, uh, obviously, the title, Straight Line Solutions. The theoretical side, I'm not going to uh, do any computations. I just need to talk about uh, why expressions like this are, in fact, straight line solutions and uh, the fact that they solve um, uh, differential equations, uh, a linear system of constant coefficient uh, differential equations. So, uh, so first of all, the first fact is that vector-valued functions of this form, um, so vector-valued functions of this form do in fact uh, lie on on a ray that passes through the point zero, uh, passes through the point v, and uh, uh, and it originates at the origin, does not include the origin. It does not include the origin. Okay? So, the, this is, you can think of this as a parameterization of this ray. Uh, at time zero, at, at t equal to zero, I'm here. If the eigenvalue is a positive number, and time is positive, then E is being raised to positive numbers, uh, uh, which will uh, make its value bigger than 1. E at time 0 is 1, but uh, for T bigger than 1, we have a, a bigger than 0, we have a coefficient that's bigger than 1, which stretches our vector V uh, by some amount, uh, by an amount bigger than 1. And so this region uh, on this side, where t is bigger than 0, we would see uh, our points moving down this line. We'd see uh, our parameterization move in this direction for increasing values of t. On this side, however, when t is less than 0, e to the lambda t, uh, e to the lambda t overall will always be a positive number. When uh, t is a number less than 0, these are negative exponents, and e raised to a negative exponent is a number less than 1. Uh, and so a number uh, less than 1 times v will shrink v. And so <clears throat> and so as time becomes just here, let's say it's just slightly negative, like negative 0.1 and negative 0.2, but as we go off to negative infinity, we continue to approach the origin. And we have an infinite number of points in this region, and as t goes to minus infinity, uh, we are approaching the origin in the case where lambda is bigger than 0. In the case where lambda is less than 0, again, at time 0, we're right here. But if lambda is a negative number, as t increases and is positive, we'll be moving in this direction, um, when t is positive, and we'll be over here when t is negative. And so uh, when I start here at t is equal to 0, for positive values of t, I will move um, in this direction. If I start at t equals to 0 here at v, uh, if t is negative, so minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, I'm going to be moving in this direction. Okay, that's our first visual as to what straight line solutions look like. They're not actually complete lines, they're actually rays. They do not include the origin, but they uh, do include every possible point going off to infinity of, um, that lives on this ray. Okay, next. Fact two, if I have a matrix <clears throat> A 
with eigenvalue lambda and corresponding eigenvector v, <clears throat> then we know for sure that a times v equals lambda v. That's the definition of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Furthermore, a function, a vector-valued function of the form e to the lambda t times v is a solution of this linear system. I want to verify, uh, verify that for you. So uh, how are we going to do this? Well, we're just going to start. <clears throat> we're going to start. Oh, let me work in black. Uh, that'd be better. We're going to start by just taking the derivative of our solution. So that's the derivative with respect to t of e to the lambda t times our eigen uh, vector. Well, we're taking the derivative with respect to t. This is a constant. Here's where our t lives. And so the derivative simply brings down the lambda e to the lambda t times v. That's its derivative. Lambda and e to the lambda t are both scalars. They're both real numbers. It doesn't matter what order I multiply them in. And so I'm going to commute them and say it's e to the lambda <coughs> t times lambda v. That's legitimate. I'll even put some parentheses around this. And as I look up above, I see that lambda times v is the same as the matrix A times v, so that's good. And uh, I'm going to replace that, so <clears throat> I'm going to write it as e to the lambda t. But I can now write this as A times v, because lambda is an eigenvalue and v is its corresponding eigenvector. Uh, this scalar can commute, uh, well, can be written on the other side of A. I can either multiply A times V and then multiply everything by the scalar, or I can multiply the scalar times V first and then multiply by A. These are properties of linear algebra and matrices. So it looks like this, A e to the lambda t times V. But as I look at that more closely and I put parentheses around these things, I recognize, well, that's just what we called our solution. Darn it. That's what we called our solution y. And so I have demonstrated that if I differentiate y, and I follow all these steps, equal, 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 I arrive at a statement, the derivative of y, so let's write them together, I arrive at the statement that the derivative of y with respect to t is always equal to the matrix A times y, and therefore y is a solution. It satisfies the differential equation. Okay. Last, last things. So I've, I've demonstrated that such things are solutions, that um, functions of this form are solutions. I've said that they are, uh, they represent straight lines, actually rays. And finally, the final thing together is this third fact. I'm just going to read through it, and then we'll be done. That says, <clears throat> suppose matrix A has two distinct real eigenvalues, and that's typically when they're real, they are distinct numbers. We'll, we'll deal with a case where we have repeated eigenvalues later, but we have got two distinct ones right now, lambda 1 and lambda 2. And they have corresponding eigenvectors, v1 and v2. And I've just demonstrated in the previous fact that both of these, anything of the form e to the lambda 1t times v1, where v1 is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 is a solution of this differential equation, as is 
uh, y2, also a solution of this differential equation. Furthermore, at time 0, uh, y1 at time 0 is just, this term is just a 1, we just get v1, and y2 at time 0 is just v2. Distinct eigenvalues have eigenvectors that lie in different directions. v1 and v2 will lie in different directions. They are linearly independent. Therefore, when I'm looking for a general solution of this differential equation, we had a theorem from section 3.1 that said, all I need are two known solutions that are linearly independent at time 0, so here are my two known solutions, and we've shown that something of this form, a constant times e to the lambda 1t times v1 plus a constant e to the lambda 2t times v2 is in fact our general solution when we're in the case where we have found two real and distinct eigenvalues. Okay, that's it. Uh, next, I'm going to solve an actual problem. That'll help, too. Thank you.